Hello, Green Scene. There's been a lot of talk about when the next Utah medical cannabis pharmacy is opening their doors. To date, there's only three out of 14 pharmacies operating in Utah. Patients, especially those down south, have been asking us, when is our next pharmacy opening? To answer those questions, we have a special Salt Bay Q&A today. With us is Richard Maloney, General Manager at Wholesome Co., and they're the next pharmacy scheduled to open their doors in Bountiful, just north of Salt Lake City. Welcome, Richard. I know things have been busy for you, so thank you for giving us your time today. Absolutely. I'm, I'm super excited to, to join the green scene here um, in Utah, and I appreciate you guys inviting me to be on your show. No, we're, we're glad to have you, mostly because we've been getting so many questions from our readers about when Wholesome Co. is opening their doors. So I'm just going to get right to it. Do you guys have a date set for when you're going to open? Yeah, I can unpack that question for you a little bit. Um, so we, we had a great meeting last week, Thursday, with Rich O'Born, um, Kayla, uh, and Katie over there at the Department of Health. Um, and that, that went really well. We had a really productive, probably three-hour meeting with the, the team at the Department of Health. There are a few, few additional things we've got to check off our, our checklist, but all signs are pointing to us really being in a position to probably be open to the public and the patients of Utah on Friday, August 7th. There may be a chance that we do a smaller kind of soft opening this coming Friday, the 31st, that might be, say, friends and family that are patient and card holders, um, maybe some industry folks. Um, but as things sit right now, I think our, our actual grand opening would probably fall on Friday the 7th. Right on. That's exciting to hear because, again, we've been getting asked every day, when, when are they opening? And without having the answers to that, you know, how <laughs> much I can say. Um, I appreciate the community being patient with us. Um, we, we're really close. Things are coming along really well. The shop is actually looking really beautiful. Um, there's just kind of those last minute things like furniture and your vault and making sure the security cameras are all in the right spots. Um, so uh, I appreciate the, the Utah patient community kind of patiently awaiting our arrival. Oh, well, you know, us, especially here at Salt Lake City, we know it's not just as easy as stocking the shelves and opening the front doors when starting a new medical cannabis business here in Utah. What have been some of the holdups getting you that, that have really held things up or just been? Yeah, I think uh, that, that's, that's a great question. Um, I think the environment that just the world is in right now, the global pandemic, uh, I think COVID I don't want to. I don't want to say had fully slowed things for us, but it does add another layer of complexity. So, one example of that is two weeks ago, we decided to remove two walls um, on the pharmacy floor so we could expand more space for patients to have better separation, um, so we could add more square footage to the actual pharmacy floor. So. That's one example of, of something that can kind of throw off your initial plans. I think we were really, really pushing and trying to open the shop on Pioneer Day, which would have been awesome. But um, just those, the, some of those minor changes, ensuring that um, we're in compliance with all state laws, um, security cameras, panic alarms, key card access that goes on all the doors, um, we really want to ensure that not only our, our patients that come to see us can feel safe, but also the, our staff as well. And where is this pharmacy located in Bountiful? Yeah, so we are we're located at 580 West, 100 North in Suite 1. So we are from the front door of our building. If you're looking south, you can see the main entrance of the Costco in Bountiful. And we are, we're actually in the old... I don't want to call it historic, but I think it's a little bit of a landmark in Bountiful. It's called the Car Printing Co. Building. Um, and so it's you can see it off I-15. Um, eventually, uh, as we finalize our signage, you will be able to see it um, from I-15, whether you're heading north or south. Um, you'll be able to see a, a, a piece of signage that reads Folsom Co. Um, on the side of that building from the freeway. That's exciting, knowing that you're going to be driving down the interstate and 
the green scene is going to be shining and bountiful, so to speak. Yeah, there'll be our we'll have our little green cross there as well. It's obviously permissible by the state, um, so we're we're kind of excited to have some visibility off the actual freeway. And with the pharmacy opening, there's been a limited amount of licenses for, let's say, cultivation, processing, pharmacies as well. Do you only hold a pharmacy license or will you be growing medical cannabis too? Great question. Uh, so we're actually blessed to have the cultivation license as well. Okay. We have not finalized the, uh, the processing license yet. We feel very confident that we will be in a position to also have our processing license. Um, so we do have a temporary grow currently um, that is located in the North Salt Lake area. However, we, we've really been, um, I'd say, probably over diligent on where we want to put our larger grow facility. Obviously, under state law, we're able to have up to 100,000 uh, 100, uh, square feet of canopy. So we're really looking for that, that right spot. Um, and we want to make sure that um, it has access to enough power. We don't have to bring in additional power. Um, we're really looking, um, we're feeling good about a few prospects that we have right now. Um, so we've, we've got an amazing team in the, on the cultivation side that are, are actively, I, I may even call our, our, our temporary facility almost like our pheno hunt. Um, <laughs> so we're, we're, I'm really excited about the, the flowers that we have growing in that facility. Um, and I think the, the patients of Utah will be when that time comes, when we, we bring those products to market, uh, which should hopefully be um, at large scale by, by December. And if not December, most likely Q1 of 2021. Right on. That's, that's another exciting point because we, we only have eight growers in the state. And if you visit the local pharmacies, you've noticed there's only been a limited amount of flour, maybe three or four growers in the state producing. So there's been questions. Where are these other growers? And patients need to understand, and I keep saying this might be our new phrase, but patients be patient. You know, <laughs> starting up a pharmacy and starting up a grow isn't so easy all in one year. Yeah. To know that you guys are taking the proper steps to do this is exciting, especially for the coming year. Right. Speaking of pheno hunts, what types of strains are you going to be growing? Yeah, let me, um, I can actually give you a couple, a couple of strains that uh, we are currently in the process of growing um, to give you a little taste. Uh, one second here, let me pull up our existing list. But some of my favorites, and I probably won't highlight all, all 20, 21 or 20 or so, but um, Grape Marmalade is a strain that's, that's producing some great results for us right now. Purple Punch. Um, we've got a really nice grapefruit strain. Um, we actually have a Blue Dream that's that's testing really well um, on some of its initial results. Um, we've got a Grease Monkey, which is uh, some of the parents of that are Cookies and Cream uh, crossed with Gorilla Glue Four. Um, we've got some, I think, some interesting strains up our sleeve that. Um, are not available in the market yet. Um, so I think when we come when we come out, um, I think the patients of Utah uh, should be excited for for when um, we're really in full force and have our full flower and, and concentrate lines launched. Well, and that that brings up an interesting conversation because a lot of our patients and audience members will be like, "Well, why are you?" So suited to pick out which strains us patients consume here on the market and doing a little bit of research before our interview, you worked at Leafly and yeah. you helped develop um, their cannabis guide. So I think if there's anybody choosing which strains patients should have a selection of it, it should probably be you. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I definitely, at my time at Leafly, I spent five years at the company. Um, it was an absolute joy working for them. Um, they, they really are, to me, kind of pioneers in cannabis education. And so I, I really had the luxury of working across many departments at Leafly, but the new guide was um, really spearheaded by our, 
our principal research scientist, Nick Jacomis, who is a PhD neuroscientist that did his academics at Harvard. And so I really had the luxury of, of, of working with the team there and, and Nick um, to ultimately create a way for patients, consumers to see the similarities and differences between um, cannabis cultivars, um, really with just their eyes. And so a main, a main thing that kind of goes into that, as you will all begin to notice, in regulated and licensed medical and recreational uh, cannabis environments, most products come prepackaged. Oregon would be a market where you may still have the luxury to go into a store, have a bud tender, allow you to smell that product. Really what we were trying to accomplish was allowing someone to really see with their eyes what they couldn't smell with their nose. And so to unpack that further, um, we really were looking to shift away from the indica sativa hybrid classification model, which you. most people, um, I don't want to say it's the easy route, but it can be the easy route for people as they're trying to help a patient through their journey. Um, however, knowing what we know or knowing what I know today, it's not the most accurate way for a patient to understand the similarities or differences between the strain. What really matters is what you can't see with your eyeballs, which is the chemistry of the plant, which are the cannabinoids and terpenes. So that is something that I'm very passionate about. And I'm really pushing certain parties um, to recognize the importance of Utah being a very medical uh, focused cannabis market. It is extremely important that the, the labs are able to produce terpene results. Um, that's a major component of the medicine and um, it, it can really provide a much better way to have a conversation with a patient about the ailments they're looking to, to mitigate. Um, and, it, and without knowing the, the terpenes that go into the, the potential flower you're vaporizing or um, concentrate that you're having, it, it, it does make it difficult um, to kind of find that right product. So I'm, I'm extremely passionate about cannabinoids and terpenes and, and not just THC, not just CBD. There's, there's CBG, which I believe is going to be another um, major cannabinoid that kind of builds in popularity here soon. Um, and so I do feel really confident about the other folks that were issued cultivation licenses here as well as processing license. So I'm very impressed with the team at Trike um, and Scion, Oak Bridge. I, I really do think that the, the state's got a good uh, cast of folks that are, are growing medicine for the patients here in Utah. And Utah should feel really thankful that they've, they've got a good group of people that are, are, are growing their medicine. Yeah, I have to agree with you there. The people we've interviewed in just the short amount of time we've been operating, um, everybody, we've got a really eclectic group. And like you, we, they all come from different areas that make our, our Utah market strong. Um, you know, with Leafly and everything behind your belt, I guess another good question is, how is Wholesome Co. going to be different from other Utah pharmacies when you open doors? Absolutely. That's a, that's a great question. And, and so to me, um, something that we kind of pride ourselves on is, is that Wholesome Co. is a complete plant to patient medicinal cannabis company. Um, so we are, we are in a position where we're able to cultivate when the time comes, achieve our processing license, and then sell quality products um, at, 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 at value. So patients are really um, going to define what we do and how we do it. So we want the patients of Utah to really feel that Wholesome Co. is there for them on their cannabis journey. And, and whether you're a extremely experienced cannabis user, you're brand new to cannabis, I always believe there's more education to be had. And so our company, I think, is gonna really pride ourselves on when we when we don't know the answer, we're gonna we're gonna let you know that. We don't, but I think one thing that our company is going to do is we're going to go above and beyond to try and find that answer for you. And we have some really unique people on our team that um, helped actually in the in the process of 
getting medical cannabis legalized here in Utah through Proposition 2. Um, and so I think where we'll, where we'll be different is we've got a team that's constantly working on we're, we're constantly working on our education. And so just one area um, that I wanted to highlight to you, all of our pharmacy agents at Wholesome Co. will be going through a, a pretty extensive educational program, which is run through a company based out of California called Greenflower Media. Okay. Um, and they have a very intricate, very well-detailed educational platform where they have everything from written content to visual content to short snippet style videos that is a requirement actually for all folks that will be um, pharmacy agents at our store. So we're making an investment in, in our employees um, to make sure that they kind of have all the tools and education that, that they need to, to have a good conversation with the patient. Um, as well as we've assembled a, a stellar cast of uh, pharmacists, as well as this team of what they call in the pharmacy world, PRN pharmacists. So um, they're kind of our, our pharmacy float network. And so a big thing that our company is, is looking to pride ourselves on, on the pharmacy front, is um, convenience. So you're gonna constantly hear that out of uh, Wholesome. And, and I think something that, um, it's going to take us a little bit of time to get our, our, our feet under us, but that's something that we're looking to offer our patients. While it may not be for grand opening, we're going to create a very extensive um, curbside pickup uh, offering for patients once they've actually visited the shop and been in store with us once. We do have a drive-through at the pharmacy that we'll look to utilize for, say, patients that could have compromised immune systems, um, or really any patient for that matter. However, um, convenience is gonna be something that we've really tried to, to put our best foot forward on, especially in the light of the way that things are going with uh, the global pandemic. Um, we wanna do everything that we can to keep our patients as well as our staff safe. And so we will be using um, a program, uh, our online software called Dutchy. Um, they're a company that's based out of Oregon that, that kind of enables you to offer uh, an online uh, ordering solution for in-store pickup, curbside, and then as, as things progress, um, we do very much so look forward to offering the state of Utah uh, home delivery. Yeah, that program is in the works. We just talked with Richard Oborn last week and just like everything in this new program, there's some technical stuff going on, and especially with the delivery system, they have a lot of, a lot of kinks to work out. One maybe fun fact that, that the folks uh, in the green scene here in Utah might like to know is um, really one of our majority investors here. Uh, he, his background is actually in food delivery technology. His name's Chris Jeffrey. Um, he started and founded a company called Order Up on the East Coast that was food delivery on demand as well as in-store pickup. And so um, we, we do have a head of technology on our team as well that I did have the luxury of working with at Leafly, who he was responsible for building API integrations, which is basically to unpack that for you. When a uh, point of sale system would need to communicate with Leafly to have the menus basically feed in real time, yeah. we, have, uh, we have a head of technology that um, is on our team here at Wholesome Co. That's gonna ultimately, I think, build a very user-friendly platform for patients to go online, view Wholesome's uh, menu, and then ideally be able to place an order, obviously, if they uh, have their, their medical card here in, in Utah. It's really exciting that you're incorporating a lot of the tactics and operations at Leafly and bringing them on board with what you're doing at Wholesome because through time, they've obviously worked at Leafly. Um, even at Salt Lake City, you know, we, I feel like we're walking in your footsteps in a sense with our strain reviews that Larson Quick's doing for us. I love them. They're great. I've been reading through a few of them. Well, that's well great. You know, and that's one thing we get the luxury of here in Utah is now we finally have Utah-grown cannabis. And I hear it from the outside 
outside states that try to bash on Utah cannabis. And it's almost like our scenery here and why we don't get the tourists that Colorado does. And it's like, well, keep that notion. We don't mind. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I felt like I, I came across a hidden gem. I, I spent the first 60 days up in Park City with my family, and I was like, this place is beautiful. So I don't know what people are talking about. So um, I, I think it's a matter of time before things are really kind of up and running here. And um, I, again, I'm so impressed with the, the groups that are already up and running and growing cannabis for the patients. Um, I think the future is really bright for this state, and uh, I really think it's a matter of time before people might be saying, wow, Utah has some of the best cannabis I've ever had. So I, I'm really excited for what, what is to come. And I'm right on board with you there, and it almost seems inevitable with the way things are working and the climate that we have here and the growing culture, too, that that's its own culture, which I really enjoy. You know, we're not, we're not California culture. We're not Oregon, Washington, Utah's unique. Um, totally. And, and speaking to that, it's, um, uh, Tyler at Oak Ridge, like his family has a background in growing plants. And yeah. so it's actually really fun to, to talk with him and, the, and, and their team. And, and you got some people with some serious green thumbs that are, are growing your medicine. So, um, I think people here are, are lucky. Yeah, we're looking forward to eventually go visit with the Oak Bridge boys, if you want to call them that. <laughs> they, they remind me a lot of the Zion crew and kind of stuff that they have going, but I'd be remiss to say that they're alike because each grower is so different. And that's why we like visiting each one individually because one, you get to see where their passion originally came from, which everybody has their own little story, which is really cool if you get to actually hear it. Absolutely. How they grow and a grower's personality shows in how they grow. It's, it's amazing. And I think somebody from Leafly will probably agree with that. Um, For sure. Speaking of unique uniqueness, how I hear wholesome is going to shake up our small market right now is you're going to have a lot more products on the shelf than the other pharmacies do right now. Um, is that an impact of Leafly, just knowing that you need more to satisfy the patients? Or Yeah, so I, I, I'd probably credit, um, I'd credit our friends at, at Perfect Earth and Dragonfly, and, and I really want to commend the, the team at Dragonfly. They've been so, so helpful to our team. They, they've been like an open book to us. Um, their, their pharmacist there, Kevin, brought us in. Um, Narath and team have been so supportive and kind of, letting us know some of the hurdles or challenges we might face. Um, they were actually came into our temporary office here at the we work downtown recently. And um, we're just an open book with myself and our staff and kind of letting us know we may face some hurdles with the MJ freeway, which is the state mandated um, yeah. seed to sale tracking system. Um, and, and, and they've just been great. And, and I think that's where I see a difference here in, in having worked in many other cannabis markets. This, this group of individuals that were awarded these licenses, I think we're all not viewing each other as competition and more so we are, we're viewing, viewing each other as if we all work together, we're going to be much more powerful and, and able to serve these patients. So I think to the product thing, I know that the team at Trike is, is doing everything that they can to, to pump out as much quality product as quickly as possible. Yeah. Um, and so, I am really excited for that point where we at Wholesome can really contribute to ideally patients never having to worry about um, not being able to buy the, uh, the allotted amounts of cannabis that they need to treat their conditions. And so I, I think that's just a potential growing pain in the market, but we are looking to, to gear up and we, we've got some pretty big POs in with a lot of the other cultivators and processors. And so my goal, really, my job is to make sure that I've got product on the shelf for these patients. Um, and so in doing that, um, I work really closely with our vendors to make sure that we are, one, fulfilling the needs of, of what patients um, are asking for and communicating that information back to them. And, and we do have some exciting stuff that, that we hope to implement for. For example, we may, we may bring in Blake, the chief science officer, officer at Zion where he could be in wholesome for the day and he he's super knowledgeable as it relates to the chemistry of the plant as you may know you guys probably talked to him 
Um, I learn something new every time I sit with that guy. So I, I know that the patients of Utah will be able to, to benefit from him. And, and um, there, there's, a, there's a great cast of, of people here that are kind of behind the scenes making the engine run. And, and I think that's only going to improve with time. And that, that is huge. You know, there, there isn't any competition. And not to take away from what Dragonfly and what Perfect Earth has been doing so far, you know, with their, I don't want to say even lack of products because they've been working with what's been available to them. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of our patients need to understand is this is still a development market. Um, it sounds like with Leafly, though, that you know this collaboration work with the other other companies is huge. And just talking with Dash over at Boojum and Mother Liquor earlier this week, it sounds like you're going to have some of their products out, which really excites our patients because there hasn't been any any extracts, concentrates, dabs. What 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 other stuff are you going to have? Yeah, so I'm I'm actually really excited to to work with the group over at Boojum. I, I think they're taking a, a very scientific approach to it all, um, and so we're we're going to really carry their their entire line of products. So from the, the Bougian Med oral sprays. Um, I'm really excited because one of my favorite strains um, was that that oral spray was created from one of my favorite strains, which is a Dutch treat maze. I believe that's originating from our friends at Trike. Um, we'll also be carrying another oral spray from them in a, in a different strain type, uh, Sunday Driver. We're gonna be carrying their uh, five milligram uh, THC capsules, we're also going to be carrying um, a purple punch uh, mother liquor concentrate that's going to be available. It's, it's a hash rosin that will be in a one gram unit. Um, and then I believe they're actually in the process of, of getting it prepared for us. Um, but we've also got another hash rosin that will be available in a one gram unit that will be originated from the orange Skittles strain. So. If everything's according to plan, that board Skittle strain, even though we don't have the access to the, the actual lab results that would produce the, the terpene result, I believe that is going to be a strain that should have some, some good volumes of terpenaline in it, which is my favorite terpene, um, which tends to kind of land in that more, um, so to speak, energizing side of the spectrum. Um, and then we're also going to be carrying their farm to pharma products as well. So some tinctures as well as some higher milligram dosage capsules. Um, so really excited to, to work with their team and, and kind of bring uh, this, this hash rosin concentrate product to the, the patients of Utah. Yeah, and it's interesting to hear you talk about the strains that you love, especially the terpenes that you love, because that's something that Utah patients are learning pretty much daily right now is about the entourage effect and how cannabinoids and terpenes work together and give you different effects, right? Um, so it's not always about THC and it bugs me when people go in and look at the menu boards on our local pharmacy and they automatically go to the highest THC content. I'm a huge lover of THC, but how, how would you explain to our audience why the entourage effect is important? It's not every day you get somebody from Leafly to explain this to you. <laughs> yeah, so um, obviously uh, cannabis is made up of a wide array of cannabinoids and terpenes. And so in a lot of the work I was doing at Leafly to help launch the, the new guide to cannabis, I think one, one thing that patients and consumers should understand is that THC is not don't don't put it in the the king bucket and i highly recommend you don't purchase your cannabis based off thc percentage there are so many other um, medical benefits to the different cannabinoids and terpenes that are made up in the plant so cbg for example i believe is a terpene that is going to gain some massive popularity over the coming months and years and kind of the, the two that are are, are, are the, the ones that everybody knows are THC and CBD. And so I imagine that you could kind of make the, the statement that it would be for, for those that consume alcohol, it would be like going and only buying your alcohol based off the um, alcohol percentage. And right. I think if, if consumers maybe for a day didn't have 
um, any of the THC or C CBD results on their packaging and they were to blind test products, I would be, um, I'd be interested to see if they chose the, the strain with the highest THC. So um, there may be a world where in the future you could put three strains in, some, in front of somebody with varying THC percentages and, and I'd be interested to see which ones that they choose and it might not be the one with the highest THC percentage. I think um, you're right. If you ever need any guinea pigs, by the way, we've got a city <laughs> we're always available. <laughs> Lovely. As long as you guys have your uh, medical health cards, we're, we're fair game. So um, one of the requirements here at Salt Lake City, not, not yeah. to be a patient, but if you, uh, if you pass a drug test or you might be kicking stones. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> yeah. I think that, um, the, the more patients are able to educate themselves through platforms like you guys have created and, um, coming in store, um, we, we will have some plans to do educational events. Um, we do have actual area within the pharmacy that's designated for education. So um, that's also an area that uh, somebody that is not a card holder could access. And so that might be a place where someone that's never touched cannabis in their life, but they might have a, an ailing injury or back pain. They could maybe show up to Wholesome and learn something new about cannabis that might kickstart their journey for for going out and speaking to a qualified medical professional and, and seeing if if cannabis could be a, a way to make their day-to-day -day life better um, but but they sh people should do more research on the, the cannabinoids and the terpenes and there's a there's a lot of uh, medical benefits that are out there and there's even some supporting um, studies that you're beginning to see emerge out of countries like Canada even Australia um, so I think I'll, I'll continue to reiterate and, and, and blow the horn that cannabis is medicine and, and people should treat it as such. Agreed, agreed. And it probably kills you a little bit putting out product on the shelf right now that doesn't have terpene testing on the labels yet. Have you heard anything from the Department of Agriculture about how that's progressing? I know they're working on it, but it, it doesn't seem like it's any day here soon. Yes, so it definitely pains me. Um, it, it's a major, knowing those results coming out of the lab is a major benefit to patients and, and also to the, the medical providers that are speaking to them about their certain ailments because to go back to the entourage effect, when those terpenes begin to um, work with those cannabinoids is really when the, the science and the magic begins to happen with cannabis. So. I've, I, the, the constant theme I continue to hear is that they're they're working on it, and I know that they're trying to. The Department of Ag, who is currently doing um, all of the testing for all the products on the market, I know that they're trying to find a way to to make their lab conducive for terpene testing. And I don't know a timeline, so I'm probably not the best guy to to answer that question. But I'm really crossing my fingers that that's something that that comes soon because it's a cornerstone of, of being able to have a conversation with somebody about their, their medicine. And, and, and when someone does, when a patient does find a terpene that's say dominant in a specific strain and they really like that, um, it's really important to know that information because then you can then recommend a product to them that you may not have in stock, but that's very similar as it relates to the dominant secondary or tertiary terpene. Um, and, and I think as people begin to educate themselves more on terpenes, I think a lot of people are going to kind of open their eyes to cannabis as medicine because these terpenes are, are found in a lot of other um, plant matter that's out there. Terpenaline being one of them is found in apples and caryophylline is found in black pepper. So these things that people consume on a daily basis while they may not realize it, are made up of some of these terpenes that are also found in cannabis. So I think hopefully that will make some people be not so fearful of cannabis. It's, it's really just another uh, plant medicine that's in our ecosystem that um, may have been neglected for the last 90 years or so. It really has. It seems like we steered the opposite direction from, from cannabis and it's been a plant that's been around us for 10,000, if not more years, you know? Mm -hmm. um, 
And I think until you've consumed a product, uh, some cannabis, where you can see the terpenes listed off, that's the only way you find out what your favorite terpene is, right? There's no other way until you actually know what you're consuming because Leafly, I think you'll agree, can only tell you so much. Right. I, I can touch on that a little as well in that um, I think why I will continue to harp on the importance of the terpene test is that without that information, it, it it's almost, I don't want to say impossible to find that right strain for you, but it, it makes it much more difficult not knowing the the information. So if you try a strain um, here in Utah today and you don't know those terpene results, um, someone, for example, could be calling a strain Blue Dream. Yep. Um, and when you maybe send that product to the lab, um, it, it may not come back mercy and dominant. Um, therefore, it might not be Blue Dream. Right. So without that, you're shooting in the dark a little bit. Uh, but I'm hoping that they can get that up and running because it's it's extremely integral to to being able to help a patient. And so I think the message has been um, loud and clear from some of the other cultivators as well. Um, so, so I'm really hoping that we can get that information because it's I'm trying to think of a good um, another example of, of where that would be. But it, it'd be like having a, a, a pharmaceutical drug on the counter and, and not really knowing the chemical composition. Yeah. No, it's like you're excluding 90% of, of what you got in front of you, which is, is a shame. But until I started um, researching this really not that long ago, maybe three, four or five years ago, I started really paying attention to the other cannabinoids and terpenes in what I was consuming. And that's when things kind of changed for me on how I consume. But mm -hmm. talking with people like you, I've been consuming for a long time now, but I learn every day new ways that are better than what I'm yeah. doing. So it would be great to keep in contact with you, with the people at Mother Liquor, and just to see where we're going to be in five years, because the perfect example for that is where we're going to be in one year from today is going to be completely different for Utah Medical Cannabis. And again, with patients being patient, it's that time because things are being developed. You know, we're, we're, we're just not quite there yet, but we're absolutely. And, and I, and I commend all of the, the departments that are the regulatory regulatory bodies here, the, the department of ag, the department of health. Um, they, they really are a, a, an awesome team of people that are looking out for patients. And, and I, and I know that a lot of this is new to them. And so, um, I'll go back to your quote, patience be patient. Um, we're we're going to figure it all out. And I think um, I'll reiterate that there's a really good group of people that are looking out for, for patients here in Utah. And I think um, we're all kind of learning together. Um, but I, I think there's some really solid people that are, are behind creating your medicine so it's safe for you to consume. And, um, ideally, I, I hope that deters a lot of Utahns from not – from, from getting their product from a licensed source. Um, there's a lot of um, unknowns when you're not um, putting yourself within a, a legal regulatory environment. Um, so I, I push people that if, you, if you're looking to use cannabis in the state of Utah, um, take the necessary steps to go visit a, a qualified medical provider. And I believe all that should, should be accessible to them on the, the Utah Department of Health website um, and and see if cannabis is right for you. Have a conversation with your doctor. Um, I, I know that there are a group of them out here that I think it's in the 400 range right now for qualified medical professionals in the state that are in a position to write a cannabis prescription. So um, that, that would be what I would um, push people in Utah to do is um, get into the program and, and let's all work together. Um, to, to make it the best, not just in North America, but the world. I think we've got that opportunity. Yeah, I think we really do. That's not a far-fetched idea. And the, as the days progress and things develop, it becomes more true. And, you know, a lot of our audience and people throughout the state really got a bad taste in their mouth when, when there were the backdoor sessions between the state. But what you brought up is the people within the state that are working with medical cannabis 
are great allies. Rich Oborn at the Department of Health, I have nothing bad to say about that guy. He's yeah, really, he connected us. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's 100% behind medical cannabis and working his butt off right now, especially through COVID and his short staff, to make sure that we're actually working. Because it's a shame that we have this brand new program that was going to be hard to in, or push out right from the beginning anyways. And then, of course, 2020 happened. I mean, come on, you know. So yeah. anybody that's out there complaining right now, they're just not paying attention, I think. Mm -hmm. So I can't thank you enough for giving us the time to be on here because I know you have so much going on. Um, I wish we had more time to talk about the MJ Freeway. And yeah, that's something we'll, that we'll have to get together again. We will. Um, I'd love to pick your brain about so many things, Richard. It's uh, again, it's not often you get to talk to somebody from Leafly and somebody that has that experience. And I guess ending on that, what would you? Well, I guess we already talked about Utah cannabis culture. It's it's strong, you know. Compared yeah, I think I'm, I'm learning more and more every day, but I think there's a lot of exciting um, things that, that are, are kind of happening even as we speak and, and seeing patients that are going and getting their medical card and seeing this patient count rise when I get these emails from Rich um, that kind of outline and document the, the number of patients that are in the system and the number of card holders. And I see that continuing to move and it, it's really exciting to see that um, people are, are looking to cannabis for medicine. And, and I really think that um, it is a medicine and, and, and the people of Utah are, are, should be feel lucky that they've got this program that a lot of people spend a lot of time to, to make this a reality here. And so just some things that some of the folks out in the community can look for, they can visit us at, at wholesome.co. Um, that's our website, not.com.co. And so um, wholesome.co, you can join our, our club. So we'll have like kind of a text club that should outline some of the deals and the specials that we'll be putting out to patients. Um, but really just, just check out our website. Um, ideally, it will be open to the public on August 7th. Um, and so can't wait to have you come by. Um, anybody from the green scene, as long, as long as you've got your medical card, feel free to show up you'll be able to do a, an online consultation with one of our pharmacist teams. So you can kind of check that box before you even arrive to the store. Um, and then we'll also have uh, the opportunity for any patients if they want to have a face-to-face -face consultation with the pharmacist. We'll have um, two private uh, phone booths that'll be on our pharmacy floor. So you can have a private conversation with a medical professional as well as a dedicated pharmacy office that will be behind closed doors. So you can comfortably talk about your, your conditions or ailments with one of our medical staff. Perfect. You know, it sounds like you guys are all ready to rock and roll and we can't wait to come down and visit you and see uh, what all the hype is about. So, yeah. So I'll keep you apprised to uh, how things progress and we'd love to have you out to the, the grand opening to, to cover that. Yeah, no, we'd love to. And that's what our States need is this coverage, you know, and I think this is one of the first interviews that has been, before the fact, you know, any local news has been the day of these pharmacies opening. So I'm glad we get to let our audience know what's coming in the coming week or weeks. You know, we're, we're getting close. So um, again, Richard, good luck with everything coming up. And thanks again for your time. Thank you. Really appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to, to serving the patients in Utah.